Hey guys, Mr. Blitzy here. Um, this video today is going to be a read aloud. We're gonna read this book called Moonshot, which is the story of Apollo 11. Um, and we're gonna do some stuff before we check that out, but first thing I wanna say, um, we miss you guys a lot. As a teacher, I can speak as on behalf of all the other teachers at our school, um, we miss you guys a ton, and we hope that you're staying safe and healthy out there, um, staying at home, um, practicing social distancing, all that good stuff. So um, definitely wanted to say that. First of all, we miss all you guys. Make sure you stay in contact with your teachers. Send them an email. Give us a phone call. We'd love to hear from you guys. So um, I hope everybody's staying safe out there. So today should be pretty exciting. I'm excited to read this book with you guys. Um, it's called Moonshot, and uh, we're going to learn a little bit more about um, the first Americans that went to the moon. Um, before we do that, it's always good for us to do some things before we start reading a book. Um, so I'm going to go through a few questions here. And then if you guys want to pause the video and either talk about your answers or write them down in some sentences, that would be awesome. Um, so this is our moonshot pre-read. And we remember that the word pre is a prefix, which means before. So this is the moonshot before we read. So a few questions get us started before we start reading today. Okay, so our first question that we have is what do you already know about the Apollo, Apollo lunar missions? Okay, some vocabulary words for us here, right here. This word lunar right here means moon. Um, so lunar means moon. And we're going to talk about the lunar missions, specifically Apollo 11. But the question I have for you guys right here is what do you already know about the lunar missions? Do you know um, about the crashes that happened? Do you know about when we got here? What do you already know about the lunar missions? Anytime that we are learning new material, it's always important to think about what we already know. So think about what you already know about the lunar missions. The second question I put up here is, can you name all eight planets? Which maybe you'll be able to. Write them down if you think you can. Our third question is, if you were to go anywhere right now, where would you go and why? Obviously, a lot of us are stuck inside doing things that we not necessarily want to be doing. But the question that I put on there that kind of ties into this book is, if you could go anywhere right now, where would you go and why? Um, for me, I would really be able to like to go back to Colorado and see my family. Um, but I know that I'm doing what I can right here, helping out my students. So I'm happy to be here, but I really wish I could go back to Colorado. And our last question is, what do you want as a career? If you could do anything in the world, what would you want to be doing as a career? And another vocabulary word right here, this word career means job. Um, we're going to read about some astronauts who that was their career. They did a lot of work with space. Um, so it's always a good idea to think about what kind of things can you do for a job or what kind of things can you do for your career. So I'll take a step back. If you guys want to talk about those questions or pause this video right now, you can do that to answer these questions. And like I said, always a good idea to write them down if you can. And we're going to start reading our book here in just a second. All right, guys, so we're going to go ahead and check out this book. This is Moonshot, The Flight of Apollo 11 by Brian Floca, the winner of the Caldecott Medal for Locomotive. And I know that's a an award that goes to some really awesome artwork and kids' books. Um, this quote right here is from Michael Collins, who was actually on this mission. He said, reading Moonshot gave me the feeling like I was back in, up in space. That's pretty cool. And I would assume just by looking at the front cover here that that is a picture of the Apollo 11 right there on the front. So this is the book Moonshot by Brian Foca. Really cool right here. I'll, you guys can totally pause this if you want, but a really cool diagram of the actual parts of the Apollo 11 mission on here on the first page. So if you guys want to pause that, you can, but we're going to get started. Moonshot. High above, there is the moon, cold and quiet, no air, no life, but glowing in the sky. Here below, there are three men who clothe, clothe themselves in special clothes, who click, lock hands in heavy gloves, who click, lock heads in large round helmets. It is summer here in Florida, hot and near the sea. But now these men are dressed for colder, stranger places. They walk with stiff and awkward steps in suits not made for earth. They have studied and practiced and trained and said goodbye to family and friends. If all goes well, they will be gone for one week, gone where no one else has been. So if I'm reading this right now, I'm already going to be thinking about these guys are preparing to go 
where no one has been. And that's an important thing for me to realize that although we have been to the moon, we know that but these guys were the first people to actually go to the moon. And obviously they had to do a lot of practicing and studying and training. I don't know exactly how long, but I think it took many years for them to get ready to go where they needed to go. Also important for us to remember that this is happening in Florida. That's gonna be our setting. Cool, look at that, awesome artwork. Their two small spaceships are Columbia and Eagle. They sit atop the rocket. That will raise them into space, a monster of a machine. It stands 30 stories. It weighs 6 million pounds and a tower of fuel and fire and valves and pipes and engines. Too big to believe, but built to fly. The mighty, massive Saturn V. The astronauts squeeze into Columbia's sideways seats, lying on their back, facing towards the sky. Neil Armstrong on the left, Michael Collins on the right, Buzz Aldrin in the middle. Click, and they fasten the straps. Click, and they, the hatch is sealed. There they wait while the Saturn hums beneath them. Okay, so this rocket right here is called the Saturn, Saturn V rocket. This little V is a Roman numeral, which means five. It has two parts of it, the Columbia and the Eagle. And um, the part where they're sitting is up here on the top, okay? The rest of this is just for fuel and to get them where they need to go. Um, the other thing that's important here on this page is we need to know that these are the three guys that were on this mission, Neil Armstrong, Michael Collins, and Buzz Aldrin. And there they all smushed into the little Saturn V rocket. Near the rocket in launch control and far away in Houston in mission control, there are numbers, screens, and charts, ways of watching and checking every piece of the rocket and ships, the fuel, the valves, the pipes, the engines, the beats of the astronauts' hearts. As the countdown goes, each man watching is, is asked the question, go, no go? And each man watching answers back, go, go, go. Apollo 11 is go for launch. All right, so some important things for us to remember here on this page. Um, where the rocket was is launch control, and where the rocket is is in Florida. Um, a lot of people know the line, Houston, we have a problem. Um, that comes from Houston, which is the mission control spot um, where this was happening. So this is where they were monitoring all kinds of things, the valves, the pipes. They were even monitoring the beats of the astronauts' hearts, which is pretty cool. Um, so this is kind of what they would call mission control, where they were keeping track of all kinds of things, making sure the astronauts stayed safe. All right, this is kind of a cool page. 10, 9, 8, 7. So this is obviously in Florida where the um, Saturn V is about to launch. Ignition sequence started. Flames push hard against the pad. Every second pushing harder. 6, 5, 4. But still the rocket does not rise. Mighty arms hold it steady. Three, oops, sorry, <laughs> hold it till the countdown finish. Three, two, one, zero. It's pretty awesome artwork. I heard one time I actually went to where they launched these rockets, and they said that if you're standing within a mile of the launch, not only would you probably get burned by the by the flames, but the sound of the rocket taking off alone, just the sound is enough to actually kill you. So they make sure that the people that are watching, which there are people that come to watch, they're very far away from where the rocket is actually launching. Another question for you guys to think about before we go, if you're thinking about a writing, something to write about, can you imagine what these three dudes are feeling right now? I can't imagine what they're feeling. They have all this rocket underneath them. They're about to be taken off into space. They've got all these people watching them out at home and live. I can't imagine how they're actually feeling right now. And lift off. The rocket is release. It rises foot by foot. It rises pound by pound. That's a really big rocket that's taken off right there. It climbs the summer sky. It rides a flapping, cracking flame and shakes the air and shakes the earth and makes a mighty roar. And there it is, taking off. 
Armstrong, Collins, Aldrin ride the fire and thunder, press deep in their seats, their bodies as heavy as clay. Let's see, what is that sentence right there? That is a simile comparing two things using as or like. Their bodies are being compared to clay. The rocket below them shreds parts as it soars. Bolts explode. Engines ignite. First stage, second stage. Escape tower, gone. The rocket flies lighter. The rocket flies faster. In 12 minutes time, it's 100 miles high. Then after an orbit around the Earth to talk with mission control to check the course, to check the rocket and ships, the rocket's last stage fires again, pushing the astronauts on. Okay, another vocabulary word for us here is this word sheds. If you think about a lizard shedding its skin, um, and that's an adaptation that a lot of animals have. This is one thing that the rocket does is it sheds parts of it. Um, things are falling. It has different stages. So as it takes off, the whole thing is taking off. And then as it gets higher and higher into the atmosphere, parts of the rocket are just kind of falling off back to Earth because they don't really need those parts anymore. Um, but after 12 minutes, they're 100 miles in the air, which is pretty awesome. Okay, and then they have the last stage, which looks like this. And when the Earth has rolled beneath and rolled behind and let the astronauts go, the Saturn's last stage opens wide and releases Columbia, which was the rocket's tip. And also Eagle, hidden till now, a stranger ship, more, bud than, more bug than bird, a black and gold and folded spider. Michael Collins, Columbia's pilot, turns her back around. Okay, so this is the eagle, what they call the eagle. They're saying that it doesn't really look like a bird. It looks more like a bug, even though like an eagle is a bird. Um, so this was the Columbia right here. And then the eagle kind of pops out and then he's going to turn it around. So um, Michael Collins is going to turn it around so that they can continue going. Um, there are the two parts right there. Okay, and they're going to kind of put them together so that they can continue their mission. Okay. And locks Columbia to Eagle. Then Armstrong's, Armstrong, Collins, Aldrin leave the last of the Saturn and travel on in their, in their two small ships joined together, flown as one. They go rushing into darkness, flying toward the moon. Far away, cold and quiet, no air, no life, but glowing in the sky. Okay, so they shed it out their last part. The two pieces are put together, the Columbia and the Eagle, and they're going to head to the moon. On board Columbia and Eagle, Armstrong, Collins, Aldrin, unclick gloves, unclick helmets, unclick the straps that hold them down, and float inside their small ships, their home for a week. Here there is no up or down. An Ashna can spin in air and turn a floor into a wall or a ceiling to a floor. Here on, the, on those sometimes ceilings, walls, and floors everywhere, there are straps and screens and gauges, buttons, handles, hoses, and switches, switches, switches. Lots of switches. <laughs> there are food and clothes packed into corners. There are flight plans, flashlights, pens, and cameras, and they float too. They drift from hands and pockets. That's why there's Velcro everywhere for holding things so they stay put. There is no gravity right now, so everything is kind of floating around. They've got a lot of important buttons and things to keep the ship in control, um, but they use a lot of Velcro, it says right here, Velcro, to make sure that everything stays put. Can't imagine having all the things I need floating around constantly. I feel like it would be fun for a while, but it might get kind of irritating. <laughs> Here, where everything floats, it takes some time or takes some skill to eat a meal. That ham salad sandwich, watch the crumbs. Soup, it comes in a bag, <laughs> dry as dust. Fix the bag to the water gun, fill it, mix it, stir it up. Cream of chicken, not too bad. Better than the peanut cubes. <laughs> so all their food was packaged like this for them, so it took them a while to make their food. Here, where everything floats, it takes some skill to go to sleep. There are no beds or pillows, no night or day. There is always, though, the hum of circus, circuits, the whirl of machines. The thought of where you are 
and the thought of where you're going. And one more thing. Here, where everything floats, everything, it takes some skill to use the toilet. It takes pipes and hoses and bags. <laughs> and there's no fresh air outside the window. After a week, this small home will not smell so good. <laughs> This is not this is not why anyone wants to be an astronaut. <laughs> I can't imagine trying to go to the bathroom with no gravity. <laughs> but still ahead, there is the moon. Cold and quiet, no air, no life, but glowing in the sky. Glowing and growing, it takes them in and pulls them close. At the moon, Collins stays in Columbia, high above, a single circling soul, circling soul. Armstrong and Aldrin leave in Eagle and take it low and lower. They have just enough time and just enough fuel. They have a plan and a place to land, a chosen safe site among the craters. Okay, so these things are craters. We have um, Michael Collins is staying up in the Columbia and Buzz Aldrin and, and uh, Armstrong are in the Eagle, heading down to the moon. Now friends and strangers in the distance, down below, stay up late, get up early, and stop as one to watch and wait. There are only maps and models to see. There is no camera that can show the landing far away. But what strange sounds there are to hear, whistles, beeps, and static. Strange new words and quick clipped news of altitudes and speeds leaping across the dark between mission control and the men who are taking the eagle to land on the moon who are going where no one else has been. Okay, it was, this is a very common thing. TVs were just barely a thing. So we would have a lot of families back then that would watch these events unfold. And I'm sure it was Probably the biggest news thing that was happening at the time, these two or these three men heading to the moon. On board Eagle, Aldrin calls out information while Armstrong steers the ship. They fly lower and lower, looking, looking for their landing site. But now, Eagle, they see, has flown too far. They are miles from where they mean to be, and below their small and spindly ship, they see no level place, only broken stone and rock, only shadows in deep craters, on the great and growing moon. Far from home and far from help, still steady, steady. The astronauts fly till time and fuel are running out. As we learned in the beginning of this book, they made a lot of plans. They practiced and practiced and practiced. Any time that anything went not according to plan, I'm sure these men were probably freaking out but one of the great skills of an astronaut is you need to be a good problem solver and that's what these guys did so there's that awesome drawing of the eagle landing on the surface of the moon right there then there clean and flat not too far 60 seconds left armstrong fires the rockets eagle slows and lower goes until a spray of dust a bloom of moon flowers up around her, slow and slower, low and lower, low and lower, landing. That's them right there, landing. And far away, where friends and strangers lean to listen, where friends and strangers lean to hear, there comes a distant voice. Armstrong calling from the moon, calm as a man who just parked a car. Houston, he says, tranquility base here, the eagle has landed. Armstrong is calm, but on earth they cheer. Then Armstrong and Alden climb down from the eagle in heavy gloves, in large round helmets, in suits not made for earth. In suits made, from the moon, made for the moon. Here below, all around them, cold and quiet, no air but life. There is life on the strange and silent magnificent moon armstrong and aldrin walk its rough wide places they step they hop as light as boys they lope they leap in the dust and snow stone beneath their feet no seed has ever grown no root has ever reached still secrets wait there 
the story of the moon. Where did it come from? How old is it? What is it made of? Not green peas. And up above the ash gray plains, the sky is pitch and empty, and all the stars lay, stay hidden. That is how bright the moon is when you are standing on its face. So the moon is super bright. You can't actually even see very many stars when you're up on the moon. But in that blank and starless sky, high above there is the earth, rushing oceans, racing clouds, swaying fields and forests, families, friends, and strangers, everyone you've ever known, everyone you might, the good and the lonely earth glowing in the sky. Imagine being the only people outside of the earth at that time. Everyone you know is just floating on that little blue ball thousands of miles away. When their work is done, Armstrong's, Armstrong, Collins, Aldrin fly back together from the moon, which rolls beneath, which rolls behind, letting them loose, letting them go. They fly back together through the dark with pictures, stones, and stories with secrets of the sky, with a view from home, of home, from not far away. Back to family, back to friends, to warmth, to light, to trees and blue water. Back from the moon, they land with a splash. To warmth, to light, to home at last. All right, guys. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. Um, that was the first time I've ever done a read aloud book without actually reading it to anybody. Um, so let me know what you think. Um, it's an awesome book. I actually wore my NASA sweatshirt specifically for this. Um, this has always been one of the most interesting concepts to me to learn about space, to learn about astronauts. Um, and I think it's just so cool. Um, so just a little bit more information, um, and then I'm going to give you guys some questions to think about here at the end. Um, this happened, um, the, we actually landed on the moon, the first uh, men that landed on the moon, um, Collins, Aldrin, and Armstrong. They landed in July 1969. Um, so we actually just had um, the 60th anniversary of this, sorry, the 50th anniversary of this last year. Um, so it was 50 years since that has happened. Um, and once again, that was in July, 1969. So some people that you guys know might remember this. I definitely was not around 50 years ago, so I do not remember this, but, um, or wasn't around for this. Um, but it is one of the most important events in history. It was the first time we landed a man on the moon. Um, and the thing that's important to remember is we tried a lot of times to do this. Um, Apollo was the, that was the 11th mission or the Apollo 11. There were a bunch of missions to kind of practice and get ready for the, the lunar landing to, for the, to get ready for the moon landing. Um, and that started back in, um, the early 1960s. So like 1961. So it took America almost 10 years, a little over 10 years, um, to be able to get man on the moon. Um, another reason why that was really important is at the time that this was going on, the United States was kind of competing against, um, a country called Russia. They were actually, competing against what was called the Soviet Union. Um, it was a war, but people call it the Cold War because there wasn't actually really any fighting. Um, we were kind of just showing off and we were, we would do one thing. We're like, hey, Russia, look what we can do. And then Russia was like, hey, look what we can do. And we were kind of competing with Russia um, to be the most powerful country. And this was really important because we were basically racing them to the moon. We were basically saying, whoever gets to the moon first wins. And it was, it wasn't really a competition, but it was, we were, it was really important that America was the first people, um, first group of people, first country to go to the moon. Um, so that's another reason why this was really important is we, we beat the Russians to the moon and we were kind of competing against them at the time. Um, obviously this is a really important story for a lot of reasons. I hope you guys have gotten, 
um, something out of it. Hopefully you were able to kind of follow along this awesome book. Um, I'm going to put some links in the description of some activities and some other things you guys can read um, about this topic if it's something that you're interested in. Um, but before we wrap, I wanted to give you guys some things to think about for our post reading. Um, so I gave you some questions at the beginning of the book to check out, maybe write down. If you guys want to write these down as well, you can definitely pause it. Um, so write these down. So we'll talk about them real quick first. Um, so what did you think about the book? It's always good to think, talk about and think about um, what did you think of the book? Did you like it? What did you like about it? What did you not like about it? Um, I really like the artwork and the um, imagery that the story created. It was very descriptive. Um, not a lot of true information, but it really painted a picture for us about what kind of um, story or what kind of things were happening at the time. Um, our second question is, what type of story is this? Is this a fiction story? Is it nonfiction? Is it realistic fiction? Um, what kind of story is this? Our third one is, how could you describe an astronaut? And remember, we want to be using some adjectives to describe an astronaut. So how could you describe them with some adjectives? What are they like? Um, and maybe another question that you can think about, too, is not only how can you describe them, but what does it take to be an astronaut? What kind of skills do you need to have um, to be an astronaut? Our fourth question, what does the word shed mean? That was in our story. And then I put use it up there, use it in a sentence, um, use that word shed. Think about a time that you might shed something. Number five, what would you want, or sorry, would you want to go on a mission like this? These men worked really hard for many, many years. They had to focus and do a live a very strict life in order for them to be able to go on this mission. So is this something you would want to do? Um, obviously, we've been to the moon before, but we're still waiting to send the first person to Mars, which will happen in your lifetime. So think about, is that something you would want to do? And our last question, and like I said, I encourage you guys to talk about this, or write it down. Why were these events important? Why was humans and man and Americans landing on the moon an important event? So why were these events important? So I'll kind of stand back so you guys can pause it if you want to, to talk about those questions. Uh, I really appreciate you guys doing this. I have plenty of other books I'm going to try to do some read-alouds with. Um, definitely give me some feedback. Put some stuff in the comment section. Um, and like I said, in the, in the description, I'm going to put some links to some other um, information about uh, Moonshot and about the Apollo 11 mission. So I hope you guys learned something. I hope everybody's staying safe out there. Staying, stay in touch with us. Stay in touch with your teachers. We're eager to hear from you guys. So uh, we all love you very much and hope everyone's staying safe and healthy out there. Bye.